All right, we're looking at part one of our statistics practice. So for our first question, it says that a political scientist surveys 28 of the current 106 representatives in a state's Congress. Of them, 14 said they were supporting a new bill and 12 said that they were not supporting the bill and two were undecided. So what is the population of this survey? So who's the whole group that we're talking about? Well, that would be those representatives in state's Congress. And then it says <clears throat> the size of the population. And that size is that 106. And so our sample, it says that we surveyed 28 people of that group. So our sample is made up of 28 people. So our sample statistic for the proportion of voters who said that they were supporting the bill, well, it said that there were 14 of those surveyed, so we're going to write 14 out of the total number sampled, which is 28. 14 divided by 28, well that's just half, so we could reduce that. You could write it as a decimal if you want, or we could say a percentage. A lot of people are more comfortable with percent, so you could say about 50% of those sampled were supporting the education bill. So now based on that sample, we might expect how many of the representatives to support the bill. So if this sample was representative of the representatives, um, we're talking about really this 50% but of the 106. So 50% of that 106, well, you can take half of 106 if you like it like that. On a calculator, you could also enter this percent as a decimal, so 0 0.5, and then we multiply it by 106, which is going to get us 53. So we might expect about 53 people um, to also support that bill of the 106. For question number two, very similar here. We're looking at the city of Raleigh that has 9,500 registered voters. There are two candidates for city council in an upcoming election. There's Brown and Felis. The day before the election, there's a telephone poll of 350 randomly selected registered voters. Of those, 112 said they'd vote for Brown, 207 said they'd vote for Felix, 31 undecided. So the population of this survey is those, those 9,500 people. So that's our size. And what are those people? They are registered voters. So it's all of the registered voters that are in that city of Raleigh, or Raleigh, Raleigh. <laughs> um, so our sample is um, that little telephone poll. So there's 350 people that were in that sample. So for our stat, for the proportion of voters surveyed who said they would vote for Brown, well, that was, let's see, right here, it said 112 said they would vote for Brown. So we're gonna take 112, divided by the sample total, which was 350. And when we um, divide that, 112 divided by 50, 350, we get 32%. Now, based on that sample, we might expect out of those 9,500 voters um, who would vote for Brown, well, we could take, again, it's that percent of that sample, 32%, but then take it of the whole group, because if they're a representation of, uh, representative of the whole group, um, then we'd assume 32% of that big group would also vote for Brown. So again, you could write the decimal, that's 0 0.32, multiply it by 9,500, and it gets that we'll have about 3,040 voters. That's what we might expect would vote for Brown. All right, for question number three, we're going to be looking at bias. So we're going to identify what type of bias you think um, is going on here. It says a survey asked the following, should the mall prohibit loud and annoying rock music in clothing stores catering to teenagers? And you can kind of hear it when I left because I'm looking at prohibiting loud and annoying. So it's already um, kind of like loading the or leading the question, I guess you could say. Um, but really um, the bias that I see is that it's a loaded question bias it already has some kind of tone to it with that loud and annoying word choice. For question number five, we're looking at, um, same thing, you're looking at for bias. This time we have a survey that asks people to report their actual income and the income they reported on their IRS tax form. 
So for that one, there might be some perceived lack of anonymity on there. They might be fearful for what their responses are because you can get in trouble if you're not paying the correct taxes, right? So it could be a perceived lack of anonymity. And for that one, again, I'm thinking more about the like fear that something would happen to them if they did um, respond with a difference between their actual and reported incomes. For question number seven, identify the most relevant source, again, of bias. A survey asked the following, should the death penalty be permitted if innocent people might die? Um, that one also, it's uh, really focusing in on the innocent people uh, might die. And I would say that that would be a leading question as opposed to just asking if the death penalty should be permitted. And again, sometimes people say loaded question. Um, so leading question bias or loaded question bias. All right, and then we're gonna scoot over to the next page, number nine. In a study, you are asked, uh, you ask the subject their ages and years. Is this data qualitative or quantitative? That would be quantitative. Remember that we're talking about a quantity versus a quality. Sometimes we even say category or categorical, um, but we would be quantitative here. I'm looking at number 10, just because it's right here, it says when you ask the students their gender, well, that's not going to come out with any kind of number. So that would be qualitative. Those would be qualities we're seeing there. <clears throat> All right. Um, and we're looking last at number 11. Uh, does this describe an observational study or experiment? The temperature on randomly selected days throughout the year is measured. That would be an observational study because you're making an observation on those selected days throughout the year.